think about it. Um, here we go. The overlay? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it. There it is. There we go. So we have Johan Larsson on our right hand side playing a Night's Watch summer deck. And this is a deck that he has been building together with, well, I guess it's mainly Joe from Cincinnati building the deck, but he, he has made some input. They, they've been working on it throughout the summer over Skype, I think. Um, and then on our left hand side, we have Erik, Erik Blom uh, who is playing a really, really fast Tyrell crossing deck. So this is, this is a matchup where we were looking whether or not the control deck can keep the rush deck at bay or whether or not the rush deck will be able to win before the control deck gets all its control out on the board. So whoever gets the right, who's the first to, to get the right winner um, will be claiming these tokens. Uh, or is it the two first people? No, just, well... I'm, 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 if you want, like we can do it that way. So I so far we have no entries. So uh, yeah. I think picking two people at random is going to make a little difference. Yeah. All right. So uh, pretty much uh, these uh, two uh, sets of tokens. Uh, there's, uh, I think those are poison tokens for the dagger, right? Uh, oh, poison tokens for whatever. There's a lot of ways whatever. to hand them out. Yeah. Yeah. And then the ear tokens for uh, Sheila. Um, so those are the ones we're giving away, and we have. Uh, Two bets on Eric here, uh, and then one bet on Yuan. So at this point, are there really bets on Eric, or are people just trying to vote against the Night's Watch? Hard to With say. With four wall decks in the top eight? Uh, hard to say. So we have two people uh, betting on, on each now. Uh, so it's coming down to you, per Yo, Pearson, or Yekwuk. How do you want to pronounce uh, those players will get a set each if uh, Eric wins. And then if Yuan wins, we will have... We have a cloak of red fan. jumping in there, so yeah. people are waking up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, so they are shuffling their decks, preparing their game here. And I think that we are preparing outside here with all the other games are starting at the same time. We will try to keep you updated on... Um, what's happening in the other games as well. So uh, I think that one of the TOs, Andreas Larsson, will probably help us to know what's happening in the other games, if there's any important developments over there. Uh, other than that... Um yeah, we definitely have some exciting matches. We do, so we do. We have both of the national champions who turned up here mm -hmm. um, today have uh, made the top eight to face against the six Swedes. Yeah, so so that's right. We have uh, Evan Sor uh, facing off against... Uh, uh, Johannes Seerholt that you saw previously in play playing that really fast Targaryen deck. Yeah, and, and that match is going back a while um, because uh, he knocked out Evan in the cut two years ago here. Yep, he did. He did. And then we have uh, Tomas, obviously, uh, and he's having a rematch with David Dalin. Uh, again, uh, the same sets that we saw previously on the stream. Uh, so that's uh, interesting to see if David can find a way to capitalize on, on whatever cards he can draw into there. Uh, Tomas himself seemed a little bit, um, like he didn't really seem to have a, a great plan for how to battle that deck. It just comes down to his experience versus uh, David's deck. See, I, I, th I think that's really what's um, gonna take it over the edge, like because Tomas knows Night's Watch cards, because even in the interview, he was saying that, look, how am I gonna beat um, a mirror match? I'm just gonna know what he can do with his cards better yeah, exactly. than he knows what yeah. he can do with those cards. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Um, so it seems Eric has left the table. Uh, <laughs> so the intimidation factor of the spot glass card is yeah. um, really paying off. Perhaps he's looking for his own card for from the Warburg event itself? Yeah, I, I, I feel I have to, to, to claim some of the some of the accolades here because I did sell that spot glass card to you on uh, just after Nordics where I, I won it. Uh, and I, I feel like uh, if he wins, it might be my my doing. Right? One of these guys is actually your or meta mate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you one is uh, uh, sporting those uh, really nice tat forearm tattoos there. And, and I think when it comes to forearm tattoos, there's there's really very little uh, challenge to you one as he's sporting some of the most uh, amazing forearm tattoos in in the scene today. I think. Uh, and obviously he, he hides a lot of it from us right now, but you can see the mushroom there, which obviously Johannes Seerholm was uh, aching to get his hands on. And you will see uh, 
Well, mainly game related yeah. uh, tattoos there. It's also great to see the Lord of Light playmat make it here because um, the Three Eyed Raven, as you know, is the top eight playmat for this event. Mm -hmm. So it was always going to be part of the elimination matches. But the Lord of Light playmat uh, went 4 2 um, in a Swiss round. It did. And then made it on strength of schedule. So we're really glad to be able to continue mm -hmm. um, seeing its uh, pursuits throughout the event. Yep. Uh, it, it, it seems to be um, a overperforming playmat. Uh, if, if you will. So we have um, hands drawn here. Uh, I see economy being drawn from Eric there. Lots of it as well. And So we've got money on both sides, but nothing more than money for Eric, it seems. Yuan is taking a mulligan because it's crucial for him to get that right set up. He has to be able to keep pace with Eric. And Eric also taking a mulligan. Because he needs to get his fire as well. Um, he can't allow you um, to get set up before he actually wins. Um, so let's now, who's see. put uh, under more pressure, do you think, in this mulligan? Like, <sighs> who actually needs an explosive start? I think that Yuan is it has to be more specific about what he gets. Uh, there are more versions of setups that could work for Eric, really. Whereas Yuan is, it, he really has to see like Cravens or something in his setup uh, to, to feel comfortable here. Uh, if he can't get early Milks, early Cravens, he will have a hard time controlling uh, a fast deck like this tile deck. So he's got the wall, that's good. And he's got other locations, not sure which one, let's have a look. So he's got, <laughs> yeah, he's got the strength boost location there and he's got Halder. Uh, so he's got a lot of things that can probably uh, slow down the pace a little bit, but he has got none of those uh, negative attachments yet. Um, but he, he, he can make an, an all, all, all location, location setup open. there. And he doesn't get a lot of um, Valor options from that. No. Because he has no economy in play. Right, right. Uh, but that's still going to be quite difficult to break through if um, yeah. he gets all three icons on the board. Right, right. Uh, if he can just grab enough uh, good cards here, he might have a shot at this. Uh, whereas Eric seems to have a pretty good setup there, right? Dollar is said, very yeah. relevant. Yeah, Dollar is said will be <laughs> relevant, obviously. Uh, do we see what Eric's got in hand there? Uh, Lots of little people. Lots of little people, um, which is probably fine. Uh, he's got one Renown on the table already. Seems like he got more economy in hand. He's got some economy on the table already. Let's see. So yep. plotting here. Uh, you one have chosen to go with a. Oh, they both go with economy. Yeah, um, and our competition entries are sealed. We're taking a screenshot and uh, we'll pick a winner mm -hmm. um, after the match. Right. So, three cards are drawn, and I imagine that uh, Yuan wants to go second here. Uh, and Eric will be able to marshal then. So, we get five gold and uh, uh, possibly four reduction. Uh, only one reduction from the Great Hall there. And but a free Eleanor can't go yeah, too no, wrong. That's not too bad. And then um, economy. Can he? Oh, yeah, Eleanor, so he can play two, uh, two limited locations there. And then duping uh, the most relevant character on the board with uh, Lady in Waiting. And uh, what else? Still oh. no knights for that Lady Sansa Rose. No. Um, can we? Well, he, he's got Knight of Flowers in hand. Uh, and he can use the King's Road and still have some economy left. Seems that he does. Uh, we haven't seen any flea bottom yet, uh, so he might hold off on the scout. He's got two gold left. What do you think that might be for then? Uh, I mean, he could just hold back the gold to yep. trigger Lady Sansa's Rose. But he doesn't. He Instead, he plays some more power is uh, strength in power there all right so you one has no characters here but he's getting yes. seven gold so he he'll have plenty of characters uh, 
We can see a tricon in his hand there. For two gold, we get a tricon on the board. And then uh, that is a practice blade, right? And uh, elf on the shelf. Elf on the shelf. <laughs> well, some reduction for for his uh, locations. So that's uh, more gold, and he's using it immediately. Obviously, so gets on the two. Gets two back, and then we have Halder there. It seems so pretty explosive tasty. start from, uh, from Night Watch. One. Yeah, definitely. So uh, three. What could that be? Uh, Halder maybe, or is he saving that for later? <laughs> he doesn't. He might not. I'd go with the Forest Hunter, maybe. It's interesting to see the added uh, value he's getting from Isle of Ravens now. Yeah. Because um, with everybody trying to run Flea Bottom, Isle of Ravens mm. just tossing away things from your opponent's mm -hmm. discount. Yeah. Um, it suddenly becomes a very significant money play. Very interesting. So Halder is on the board there for extra strength boost. So he's got plenty of strength boost now. Um, and all of the lads are builders, so Knight of Flowers yeah. is no yeah. longer looking so hot. No, no. And... Uh, um, is that a haunted forest there and an iron throne? Maybe looks like right. What? It looks like a haunted forest. No, it's Isle of Ravens. Oh, Isle of Ravens, yeah. And that, so he's playing the forest hunter, and also Shadow Black Tower, which oh, is it's a Shadow Tower. That's nasty really nasty. That's a crossing. nasty play. Yeah, that's really nice. He wants that on the board. I think he's playing it. Well, Revins will be interesting later on, but right now... Well, maybe perhaps not, not in this match. Uh, we don't yeah. actually know if um, Eric is running Flea Bottom. We don't, but ha seeing that scout in hand, I, I can only think that makes for a good play for him, right? At least one of, probably more. So, uh, you want passes marshalling and we move into challenges. Um, so, it's what's really tricky about this deck is the amount of power boost it can generate onto its characters. It's really hard to win a challenge against it. No gold for the ambush blade, but... Um, no, not at this moment. Um, but he can defend the wall easily. Oh, sorry, he, uh, well, he can oppose enough to defend the wall without any problems. So that's the intrigue one assumes is going to be blocked I by Dollar's head. Yeah, I can only assume. Um, so... We have faction card being knelt. And this is where the power of that card I sold him comes into play. Uh, having such a strong faction card, he can easily block this with, uh, with uh, Dolor Said, and he can remove an icon from, from Knight of Flowers. Was that he the military? He stops Knight of Flowers attacking. Uh, Shadow Tower. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Shadow Tower. So he's, he doesn't remove icons. He removes uh, the attack. It's basically a craven, a reusable craven. So we have an attack from um, Brienne here. Might be military, right? No, that makes sense. Looks like military. But you can just kneel both of them to yeah. defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going to be too hard. It's plus so three. Yeah. So that's now a block for five, block for eight. Yeah. Eric looks like he's having such a wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. Uh, this is this is the start that you want needed to to be able to work in this matchup, and uh, that's a power challenge maybe. Power for six. Yeah, and blocked. So he gets his crossing bonus, yeah. but um, not nothing else. It's a less than spectacular achievement at this point. And and that's just leaving him open for uh, you one swinging back with. Uh, Oh, he doesn't, obviously, because uh, he, he can't use Halder's ability on uh, on attacking. Um, all right, so we have... Uh, the wall trigger, two power on each side. Yeah. But yeah. realistically, the builders are starting to get their shutdown. Yeah. So at this point, um, with Tyrell, he's probably looking to get a enough reset. dupes yeah. to get value on a reset. Re yeah, exactly. Uh but then, what set up like this, uh, I, Yuan doesn't really suffer that much from a, a reset. Uh, he, he can yeah, recover. Yeah, Holder is the only yeah. relevant character yeah, there. Yeah, he, he can re recover from 
from a reset fairly easily. And he's drawing in drawing cards here, which makes a lot of sense. Um, he hasn't seen any of his card draw yet. Uh, and he gets into a Pintoshi, so he even gets lots of money uh, on this. He'll have five, six, seven gold uh, on a Counting Coppers turn. Well, yeah. That's it's, kind of uh, That's right. a Craven in his hand as well, and I can only imagine that goes down on Brienne. Well, Craven on Brienne... Brienne, well, the ability no, to block, you probably don't, that's don't put Randall. on the Flowers. That's Randall. Uh, or there we go. That yeah. seems to be like a spectacular volunteer for... Yeah, for a Craven. I think Randall is uh, the prime target. And again, the, <laughs> the Craven, it works double because it also gives Halder something to kneel uh, in order to boost strength. So it's really... It feels like these cards are cheating a bit. Yeah, um, the play around the Shadow Tower is going to yeah. be so tough. Like This is interesting because um, earlier in the season, mm -hmm. we saw a match very much like this mm. um, between uh, Tomas Albeck and the former UK national champion. Yeah. So Ryan Wood was playing mm -hmm. the Tyrell Crossing against um, Night's Watch. Yep. It was the more classical Night's Watch instead of the Builders, mm -hmm. but um, the dynamics will be still be quite very, very similar. Very you still have the similar. Shadow Tower yep. that had to be worked around in that matchup. Right, right. And you still have the inevitability of the wall that he needs to break through with sufficient renown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So seven gold for you one here. And he probably won't overextend here. You're looking to keep cards in hand in order to be able to recuperate from the inevitable reset. Uh, so four. All right. Yeah, it's our building orders. Yeah, yeah that's our building orders uh <laughs> on demand. Um, that makes sense. Um, don't see any dupes for Halder, uh, so he's triggering that. Uh, searching top 10 cards for a location or attachment. Or actually for a uh, Night's Watch location or attachment. I can see a Craven in there, and that's one he grabs. And then he's got three gold left, which will be enough to take two people. Craven Randall. Craven, Craven Knight of Flowers. Yeah, probably. Or Isle of Ravens. Or, or Brienne, because she's got the dupes, so she's sticking around. I'd, I'd probably go with Brienne uh, at this moment. Uh, he's not too afraid of, of, um, of the fact that uh, Knight of Flowers has to... The, the going alone thing is not a problem for him. All right. So... Let's see if we guessed correctly here. Randall is obvious target, right? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to attack multiple times in a turn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, having a renown standing, like he's really a big part of the rush. Mm -hmm. He is. He is. Uh, yeah, and you can see here that the Tyrell prayer is under such pressure, mm -hmm. so he's had to play the pleasure barge already turn two exactly. to populate the board. Yeah. So with that, he's already lost what gains he had from Eleanor on turn one. Right, right. He's already used up his uh, King's Road. His Rose Road is now nullified. Right. So in terms of economy, his the Night's Watch player one. is actually ahead. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if it, even if it's only with one underground wall, but that underground wall is going to trigger almost every time for two gold. So that's the Craven on uh, Craven Randall. one. And here comes the other Craven. And yeah. Oh, you're right. How you like them uh, apples, Victor? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I got it wrong. I guess one of the things here, obviously, is going to be the uh, the Lady Sansa's Rose trigger as well. Uh, being able to stop uh, the knights from attacking. Oh, Jesus. Oh, here comes Castle Black as well. Um, so he's your one is fully set up here. He's yeah. got everything on the board that he wants to have on the board. Uh, he might want to have a dupe eventually on, on Halder and maybe uh, also one on What's-His-Face that gives you a free building orders. But but it's not unique. Yeah, all right. Oh, he's he's u not unique yeah. even. All right. So, yeah, he wants a dupe on Halder and that's it. Uh, apart from that, he's got everything he wants here. So it's a uh, military stealthing the... Stealthing the... Old Forest Hunter? Yeah, I, I guess. So it almost looks like uh, Johan actually forgot about that. It would seem. It would seem. Because uh, he left himself without the gold to play the practice blade. Right, right. And the wall kneels. Woo! Yeah. 
So that's uh, one down for for uh, Eric. Uh, that's his first, <laughs> the first one he had to do. Now he's got to do that again and again and again in order to keep the wall nailed down. He's got three goal left. What do you reckon those goal could be? Where? Uh, at the trial player. He's got Where? On no, that's power. Yeah. He's using coins for power. All right. George Washington pennies. All right. Uh, my bad. Uh, at least I think it's George Washington. It I don't remember. It looks like. Uh, Hopefully some of our American viewers will be able to comment. Yeah. Huh. So that's the wall being now. No. That means that you one can give on the posts and go all out on attack. But again, with two uh, Craven characters, maybe that's not such a good thing. So he knows Dolores Ed is in there, and yeah. Dolores Ed, with this setup, can go to 11 strength? Uh, yeah, correct. So uh, he doesn't have 11 strength worth of um, uh, intrigue? No, he does not. Um, there we go, Abraham Lincoln. My Abe bad. Abe Lincoln, all right. So what's that then? Is that a blue challenge coming? He actually made a green challenge, it seems, with... Oh, uh, he's considering making it with more than one character. All right. Yeah, he's trying to get up to a point where he'll force him to use both. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with this uh, five-strength challenge. Makes... Because five-strength uh, allows Dolores Ed with a single one yeah. of uh, those nonsense locations yeah. to actually... Uh, Remove Eleanor from being... A, or, or the knight. Yeah. So he'll, he'll trigger Shadow Tower and, and the knight can't attack in blue. And Eleanor is going to be the only standing character. It's still somewhat of a frivolous attack, I feel. Yeah. At this situation, might have been better off. Um, even the power challenge tossing across doesn't really matter with Castle Black. No. Um, he could have just passed challenges and uh, contend for dominance. Yeah. Yep. So he got his uh, mission accomplished. Yeah. And this, this way, he makes it so that you one can actually contend for dominance, right? Yeah. He doesn't even need to use the locations, right? He can just use the, the Cravens. Yeah. yeah. It seems to be somewhat frivolous use of growing strong. Yeah. Like, you force him to kneel the location, but he has no follow-up to this. No, no. Certainly. Uh, that's four more power for Eric, but with the location, he can get... Six, six, seven more, eight, eight more power, right? He's on five. He's gone to nine. Um, Dollar is said can go to eleven if he wants to. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Yeah. He can go to eleven. Okay, oh, that's strange. That, yeah. I don't understand why you one didn't. Oh, he want to defend the power, but he could do that easily by just... Oh, he might want to get a power challenge through. That's it. This way, he m no, he can't get it. a power challenge through. He's only got six power standing, right? And he can't boost on attack. Well, he can still boost on defense, but uh, is that enough for him? Yeah. So she's got plus two strength from yep. um, going strong. She's also got plus two strength from the it being the crossing challenge. Yeah. So that puts us at um, seven and six, 13 seven. power going across. Uh, 11, 12, 13, yeah. So, that's so he can block this, so but six. it's going to cost him both his power icons. Yeah. And then he'll concede dominance. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um, and he can't grab the wall this turn. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, but, yeah, he can't possibly get pa uh, dominance with that still. He's only got four, five, six, seven standing against uh, ten standing on uh, Eric's side. So that's definitely dominance for Eric. Yeah, that's the win yeah. for the builders. Yeah. A loss for anyone who likes active. Games of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> what is he looking at there? 
I'm not sure. He's got the Shadow Tower Mason. Yeah. We know he's still got the Isle of Ravens. He's just standing his character. Yeah. And we're, and we're moving on to him. Dominance. Yeah, and for, for Dominance, Eric gets Dominance. Yeah, that's the fourth. Uh, that 10 power, power is still so very, very far away. Yeah. So you want his triggering again uh, to get... Uh, for what? What is he missing? I think he might be looking for a... Um, a uh, hunted forest, maybe. It looks like a milk. I well, can't grab milk with this because he only only nights watch locations. You sure about that? Not hundred percent, but I think so. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's a full. Uh, he, maybe he he is able to grab. I don't see an icon anywhere on that. No, you're right. Text box. So milk for who? Um, is he milking? Probably Brienne. Yeah, it's got to be, right? So everybody else is under control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as he's forcing uh, Eric to go fast, though, uh, Brienne's ability is irrelevant. It's just her she renown. She has the power. With it's renown. just her, her renown he's, he's really getting here. Um, all right. Of course, there is almost certainly a... Uh, well, so we can see two bodyguards in Eric's hand, and that's actually quite huge, because that means that Eric is going to be able to... If he's running Valor. He's going to be able to reset the board at some point. He might not be running... Because Valor is by no means a given. No, it's not. In a, in a deck that's so heavily focused on grabbing Renown, it, he might not run Valor. Um... Well, so he's ahead now. He's going to be facing down the milk. Mm -hmm. um, he's one initiative. Yep. Um, one has to one assume that um, yeah, he's the builders are just going to pass challenges. They they will most certainly. Um, so we get another two gold for you, Arm. Uh, should be one gold. No, two no, because two um, yeah. you have the character with the plus one gold. Right. You do. And uh, yeah, uh, another tricon. Uh, Ugh, and card draw. Some uh, card draw. Objection. Yeah. That's the builder card draw. <laughs> and that's that's going to be relevant if there is a reset. If Eric indeed does launch a reset. Uh, so he gets his second ability icon now to avoid... Avoid this, the, what happened last turn. And he gets another builder out um, with a, a tricom builder, by the way. Uh, so, yeah. It's interesting to see a deck like this actually make it through mm -hmm. the Swiss rounds here. Because uh, one of the complaints was that's the milk for Randall. Yep. Um, was uh, the oh, so he's milking Randall. large number of um, Greyjoy in the field. Mm -hmm. So with all the Eurons, with Dagmers floating yep. around, with We Do Not Throws everywhere, mm -hmm. it's uh, pretty impressive to see that the builders are still able to deliver the results. Yep. Oh, the, but Yuan has been playing this deck uh, for about two years uh, well not this specific deck but decks like this for two years for almost two years he's, he's always been on the builder or on the uh night's watch train almost so he's he's very comfortable playing this deck and uh, he, he can do well with it like you can see here so he's That's actually a near miss with, a, with that plot to only get two cards off it yeah it, <laughs> it is in this deck it's a near miss uh, but he he gets um uh, more power strength which could be good um, and he's got more cards in hand for a reset a possible reset it's um, yeah it's good so at the moment we're kind of distance he's got to go through the 10 power mm -hmm. milling is becoming a more likely win condition uh, more and more so yeah and that that's actually it sounds funny when we say it but uh, it, it has been my experience that you want is susceptible to mill losses uh, I have won against him several times that way. Or, or actually, I have only won once like that, but I've had my friends win in that way. So we get <laughs> a full strength power icon with a military icon as well. And I can only assume Isle of Ravens. Six strength here. now. Six strength now, yeah. And Isle of Ravens probably making it down now, right? Sure. Maybe? Start uh, preparing Yeah. for yeah. that mill loss. Right, right. So Safeguarding there, against it. There we are. Um... Exactly. Yeah, 
uh, the chat is agreeing with us that he's probably not going to mill himself out as long as he's got Isle of Ravens on the table. I still vote for a mill victory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it can happen if he's not careful, but I, I think it's unlikely. Um, so he's passing challenges back he's to Eric. His hand is getting quite small. Yeah. So it is. if um, and he hasn't seen any of his draws. Yet. Oh, that is a terrible Tyrell hand. <sighs> yeah, it's that not is what Eric tragic. is looking for. Is definitely not what he's looking for. Uh, he still hasn't got much economy on the board. Uh, he's <laughs> he's played his confiscation uh, only to see Randall get milked back up. But so really, what we want to see here is bodyguards on everybody. Yeah, I guess. And then uh, about our next turn. Because yeah. the Night's Watch random is fairly low on cards. You're right, right. But uh, Eric is even lower. Eric's only got one bodyguard in hand and one Sansa's Rose. But he'll get to keep cards in play. So he'll be the three mm -hmm. cards ahead. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, so he's saving it's one, one bodyguard. Gold. Is that one gold or is it two golds? Why did he only play the one bodyguard? He's Not blocking. I, I, I'd play the other one, right? Because it's... Oh, he's not going first, so he might be uh, afraid to to have uh, intrigue hit his uh, Lady Sansa's rose there, right? But I how is he squeezing that through? I can't see him do that, but um, for some reason, that's the only reasonable. I think that's a pretty clear indication to us that there's no valor in um, the yeah. Tyrell deck. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, so Yuan is actually making challenges here. Uh, he's hitting a, a military challenge there. Oh no, he is not. He uh, he passed challenges, and uh, this was a military from Randall. So he's you one is defending uh, with uh, Castle Black there, which should be enough. And then yeah. he's triggering uh, taking Brienne out of competition. And uh, we have a uh, intrigue. Dollar Z is still on the board since he lost, uh, but Dollar Z is going to be able to defend that challenge, I think. So it's four against four. He can kneel a couple of cravens. Yeah, or practice blades, or pretty much whatever. It's only got one craven on the board right now. Yeah, um, but it should be enough. And he'll be going to be able to search again at the end of turn. You're right, exactly. Uh, try and find that last raven. Uh, sorry, craven. So we got a power for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I believe. Plus the crossing challenge, so fifteen. All oh right, yeah, right, six more. So that's fifteen. Um, can he? Can he block that completely? Yeah, easily. I think so, right? So how much How much boost does he get from those so locations now? So he's got the two now? Grima Warren Tongues, yeah. and um, they that's are eight. five each. Yeah, five each, so, so that's ten. So he's got the wall out ten, so that's thirteen out with uh, Holder, yeah. and each one of um, the Builder Nonsense um, yeah, adds I approximately infinite strength. Yeah, I think, I think he's even trying to keep people standing to grab uh, dominance here, and he should be able to do that as well, right? Yeah. Um. Well, all he needs to beat is um, the five strength from Knight of Flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There is gold on the other side, but uh, Grima Warm Tongue and yeah, the miner and yeah, the Abandoned Strongholds enough. will get that's him there. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's plenty. And so each one of those Abandoned Strongholds is adding four, One, six, two, three, so four, that's 12. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. He's adding six each. Yeah. So that's and he still takes dominance. Yeah, easily. Uh, so that's three more power for your one. And a search. And a search. I'm surprised he didn't trigger Isle of Raven first. Yeah. Toss the Craven in there. Yeah. I would have, uh, but maybe Craven isn't what he's looking for. Maybe. Well, I or he, he just have a reason to look for anything anymore. No, well, that. 
Sure, but... Just in case. Why, though? Just in case. If he managed to do something sneaky like he did before. Uh, so he's adding the craven now. Or he just forgot that he could do that. <laughs> he's doing so much winning, just keeping track of all the other ways he can win in. Uh, that uh, could can be, be quite that could be it. tiresome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so a hard night. We've uh, deduced that there is no Valor on the other side. Um, no. What can the Tyrell player do other than uh, enjoy his uh, greatly superior artwork on the cards? I, I bet that's it. Uh, this will be a slow grinding victory for Yuan in case uh, in case Eric doesn't pull something um, tremendously interesting out. So <laughs> we get some more builders shenanigans here. He's what is he looking for? Uh, he can only bring out. Well, he could name something would he else. Would he play a throne in there? Just. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe. Yeah, he is. I saw one there. So he, he's got a throne in there. That could be something he's digging for. Craven, obviously. Just to set it to a nice uh, steady cadence of a three power turn. Yeah, yeah. Minimum. Yeah, and um, I guess he could also. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's. So we're moving into plot phase now, right? No, Tyrell player holding his plot too far back. Yeah. Can't turn the camera on him. Um, so they are plotting now. Yeah. So the one of the main problems you one has been facing all throughout this evening has been that his deck is a bit slow and he's been almost running into time every every single game and he actually had one modified win uh, which made it quite tough for him actually uh, making it into the cut like yeah because yeah. he was on four wins and he still absolutely had to win his final match exactly. because of that uh, modified win yeah right right so we have the plots here so that's <laughs> yeah um Filthy accusation will be fairly irrelevant, right? Mm, It'll be dollar a said. Dollar a said of for sure. But he's got... Oh, that means that he has no tri He's got a Shadow Tower Mason in hand. Yeah. He and he's got the uh, Haunted Forest. Haunted Forest as well. Um, so it, it will be fairly... And he can't lose the first challenge. So this... Uh, I don't think he can really lose any challenge, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks unlikely, doesn't it? He, he might actually lose the green challenge this turn, but he, again, you know, it's not very relevant. He's still got plenty of cards, and I don't think Eric will be able to to use that mm, Lady Sansa's roast because it's highly unlikely that he will be able to to win a challenge with a, a lonesome night so realistically like this is the deck that kind of has been breaking the will of a lot of people um who've right. been spectating and this was back when wama was w winning with it and yeah. right now we can see the audience turning uh on the actual transmission itself despite yeah of having course. a healthy number of viewers so what is most likely to take this out this deck i mean obviously a rush deck like this can be a problematic for this deck if if you one wouldn't have got this fairly perfect storm in the setup, uh, yeah. he, he could have been in trouble here, for sure. Uh, yeah, but we still think that, um, the Greyjoy decks would have some serious game against this. It's Greyjoy decks, definitely, because they're both fast and they can control the locations. Uh, if, if, uh, if they get to start piling up any of that uh, unopposed nonsense, uh, this deck might be in serious trouble. Yeah. Um, the crowds are demanding a political disaster. Um, do you feel it's been underplayed um, in this tournament? Uh, Have we seen... Because we haven't seen any political disasters on stream on, as on of yet. On the stream, not, no. I, I don't know uh, that I think that that would be the best solution. Uh, political disaster is in a fair amount of decks. And we haven't seen... Uh, we still see so many of those decks that play plenty of locations. So... Yeah, because in this situation, like... Um, it would help quite a lot. Of course. So he'd essentially, he'd still probably be able to defend the wall easily enough. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He also got a duped. 
Yep. But once he has to make a choice between the abandoned strongholds and the rest of his locations, right. Right. he can no longer guarantee to actually win the challenges. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but then again, he is not relying on winning challenges. Not really. Uh, it just makes it a little bit faster. Uh, he, he, he only really needs to... That is a strange attack. A one? Ah... Uh, it's a zero strength challenge yeah. into the haunted forest. Oh, no, yeah, no. It's because he can't win this challenge. It's the first challenge. He has to yeah. chomp the first challenge anyway. But, but he also... But green was his best bet at actually winning something, right? It's actually an interesting move, though, because... Um, you one can still block You it. have to have a character out there to actually win the challenge. Right. So the haunted forest by itself cannot trigger Shadow Tower, which is no, a, what no. I believe they're coming out to yeah, ask us right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I, I think Yuan is going to have to block it with something in order to actually win the challenge. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Yuan can still win the challenge, he just can't lose it. So he could just leave it and it, it will just be uh, a numb thing. Uh, the, the haunted forest will still be standing and, and everything, but he can't trigger... Uh, the shadow tower off of that and he might want to trigger the shadow tower here i'm not sure though uh no you want is just pointing to the plot and probably leaving it well they're talking about i guess they're talking about the fact that he yeah the hunted forest doesn't win no the hunted forest surely doesn't win uh well, they call judge for that all right no 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 they can't do that that's incorrect I think that's an incorrect play, yeah. Well, the head judge has made his call. All right. Okay. Um, so we'll see if we can uh, get the head judge in here to, to elaborate for us a bit. But to uh, confess his sins? Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps like he's trying to accelerate us out of this builder's match, but... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, we have some complaints here that... Uh, that was the wrong call there. He has to have a character in the challenge to be able to win the challenge. So the Haunted Forest by itself cannot beat the zero strength. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just stuck in saying that, uh, so but, but if I defend, then I win it? Yeah. 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 Right. So I, 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 then he points to the Haunted Forest, and then by then I had already... Yeah, assumed that. that. No, of course he can win it. Yeah, he can win it. Uh, he that's, can that's win, but correct. he had to actually have put the character yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this case... Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so uh, we have a confession of sin, <laughs> but uh, I think it's irrelevant at this point. It'll just speed the proceedings up a little bit. It stops Randy, like the builders are not going to be declaring any challenges no, moving forward. Not. No, that it won't. Uh, so it won't have any impact, I don't think. Um, it's mostly just ongoing damage to morale of uh, the Tyrell player. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I mean, we're more likely to expect a concession long before the 15 powers actually hit. I'm sure of it. Uh, because what's going to happen here is uh, Yuan is going to keep grabbing two power and uh, Eric will be grabbing one power every turn from dominance. And that's basically it, right? And even with that, that one power is only until pretty much until Yuan finds the table his comes out. Uh, until chair. Uh, sorry, chair. The, the chair. Until Yuan finds his chair. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Eric is not playing the chair. I, I can't see why he would. Well, to get disqualified, but un yeah, yeah. unfortunately we know the builders have made it through deck checks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both of them have. Uh, With some controversy, I thought, for the Tyrell player. What was um, the pause in the deck checks there? Tyrell player? Yeah. Um, was there some controversy? Because no. I saw the deck uh, getting counted a uh, number of times. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was going on. I have to check with uh, Buzz, who was uh, overseeing the, um, the deck check of that particular one. So, um, sorry, I can't give you any more insight on what's going on there. No controversy. Would you like to make up some controversy? Just uh, Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I'm here to make bad judgment calls, so uh, <laughs> I think I contribute pretty much. Y you've done your part. Yeah, I've done my you've part. You've done your part. Uh, so... Uh, well, to be fair, that was my first wrong call yeah. today, I think. I, um, but it's in the top First bank, on so camera wrong call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that and, too. and you one did trick you a bit. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when we're on the topic of, of illegal DAX, you one was actually coming here to Warburg uh, with only two Cravens in his deck. 
uh, relying on me actually bringing his third one because I stole it last time we played. And you supported his quest of terror? Uh, I, I obviously we, we plotted all through the night to actually remove all his uh, cravings from his deck and just placing them with cards saying ha ha ha. But uh, in the end, uh, he's actually a nice guy. Uh, and we like his tattoos. You mean outside of uh, the outside builders' deck? Outside of playing play. the deck, builders' deck. But I mean, he's really a nice, nice guy. And he, he, I mean, he's he's soon to become a father. And and you don't want to have him completely broken uh, before that happening. You want him to to keep going forward with the momentum of of actually having achieved things. Okay. So how likely do you think um, the builders are to take this tournament, Samuel? He I how, how likely are the builders to take the tournament? The builders? <coughs> um, I don't know. I don't think they will. I don't think they have what it takes to go all the way. To because I mean we've seen uh, the great joy, especially from Jakob uh, playing for Snow, mm -hmm. which uh, can be quite unkind on them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, Yuan has been testing with Jakob Wallerman extensively as well. Uh, and Jakob Wallerman is playing the exact same deck as Jakob Wallerman. So uh, Yuan is painfully aware of, of how strong that, gr that particular Greyjoy deck can be against his deck. Uh, I'd say that Yuan still wins some of those games, but uh, definitely Wallerman has been taking the better out of him. Um, he has made some adjustments to be able to counter those Greyjoy decks, but uh, he, he will be relying on on drawing the right cards early yeah. on. Uh, and even Targaryen decks um, having the burn chances there yeah. Yeah. can be quite tough. Can be tough on Depending him as Depending well. on initiative, um, it can yeah. be very impactful. Yeah. Certainly. And more importantly, I think that Yuan is most likely facing Tamas or David in his next match. Okay, well, we is. have so a little a little something something here. Yeah. We got weapons at the door um, oh, coming right. in from the Tyrell player. Yeah. So, so that gives him a chance to swing in with all the renowned Lady Sansa's Rose. It yeah. still doesn't quite get him there. No, no. And that's another Haunted Forest and another boost location, right? Isn't it? Yeah, and um, that duel is after taking out um, Renly. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's after kneeling Randall. Yeah. So even the all-in play with uh, the renowned characters is uh, no longer really a possibility. I don't think so, no. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be hard. That's going to be hard to counter, really. Um, and also, you have to remind, uh, remember that uh, weapons at the door will also bounce back <coughs> the crown from, uh, from tar uh, Randall. So, yeah. Yeah, so he'll no longer be able to stand. No, uh, unless he's got another growing strong in hand. He, he's pretty much stuck being out there. I am a bit interested, though, why he Yuan chose to kneel uh, Randall rather Duel. Oh, yeah, but he could have... No, 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 six or five, uh, six or seven goals, not five goals. Uh, but also duel. His opponent yeah. picks the characters. All oh, right, all oh, right, all right. My bad. Um, so is that it for marshalling? Sure. Um, so there's uh, nightmares in Eric's hand, uh, I think. Uh, and there's. But nightmares on on the wall will just protract the game. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah, because I don't think he has any meaningful wa way of, of actually getting enough through, does he? I don't see it. Because the power blocking capabilities here are yeah, yes, grotesque, yes, I believe is the correct silly. term. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, he's got 15... 16, 17, 18, 19, 23 standing power, <laughs> or even more, uh, 25 standing strength in power without using his boosting abilities. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a tall task to get through that. 
And again, like we saw with Rab's game, the blue challenge is only re is the only one that really matters. Yeah, and I, I, I honestly don't see how how Eric is going to be able to. Do it's anything. a tough situation to be in because after yeah. he's done so well, after he has um, gone through and he has come in here as the higher seed, yep. having gone five one, um, right? right. It, r it really doesn't give him the opportunity to concede. No. And at the same time, he does not have options in terms of where he can proceed. No. So it's possible he's playing close call to maybe bring Renly back in, but all those attachments are going to be coming straight back down. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a really tough spot. It's a really tough spot. So right now it's um, largely seeing when the Tyrell player is willing to give the concession. Yeah, it's basically what we're waiting for here. Uh, because it, this game is done, isn't it? can't conceive of a way to claw his way back in. Yeah, let's see if we've got any updates from the other matches. Yeah, we haven't heard anything from, from uh, Aldrin. Who yeah, but we already have semi-finalists set, so this is the last match going. All right. Um, so we Not already have um, Jakob Hultemann. Still um, undefeated. Tomas made it through. And, and Evan made it even. through. Even, so uh, we've gone from six Swedish players down to two in the semi-finals. Yeah, and... I, honestly, it's not very surprising that Tomas took the rematch again. Uh, Evan beating out... Uh, uh, who did he beat? Linus? No. Evan beat number f six. You won, no? I can't really... This looks wrong to me. Um, I'm not sure who Evan beat. Uh, Johannes, of course. He beat Johannes. Yeah. Uh, so Evan took it, took down Johannes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but not not too surprising. Which is somewhat tragic though. That um, yeah. Targaryen rose deck was so that beautiful, was, that was so beautiful. much fun. Yeah, it was it was uh, definitely a crowd pleaser. Yeah, so two Greyjoy, two Night's Watch. Yeah. A very very classical matchup right now. Mm -hmm. um, we got mm -hmm. the battle over the locations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it really is locations versus location hate. Location hate, um, we know that um, there's newly made lords in those decks as well. Um, Definitely. Which are very relevant in this matchup. Very much so. Um, there are uh, We Do Not Sows, there are uh, newly made lords, there are... The location uh, kneeling characters. Yeah. And once the location kneeling characters cannot be taken off the board, um, it's a pretty tough situation to then have to milk a two-cost, one-strength yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, that, that will be the best option in, in a lot of, uh, lot of occasions for, for the Nightwatch player. Um, <laughs> uh, also, uh, I mean, even if they are not able to... So I, I do think that uh, Evan is playing uh, Dagmar Cleftio as well, a one-off. So, so he's so got so much attachment. Well, it's Dagmar very is um, most unlikely to do anything because Dagmar, has along with all his other limitations, has also has to win go. by himself. Yeah, right, right. Early on, he might do something, but later in the game, not so much. Unless they can keep the board nice and tidy. If they can keep the board small, clean, they might be able to do something, especially against the uh, uh, Tomasa's deck, which isn't as... Uh, which doesn't play the boosting uh, as much. It only got uh, Halder boosting. So, yeah, <laughs> we're seeing from Evan here, he looks tired. <laughs> uh, it's still a pretty humane finish. Like, we're. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at most 2100 hours by the time we finish up. Um, right. All the players have plenty of time to. Uh, catch up on sleep before their top four matches. Yeah. So then top four matches, I believe the semi-finals um, are going to be single matches and then the final itself is going to be best out of three. Yeah. So this is to allow players to kind of get home at a reasonable time. Right, right. Um, so we saw a event being played. I couldn't really make out what, but it was cancelled by Yuan. And, uh, but he's, uh, and he's, oh yeah, that was, uh, that yeah, was and the that's shape. the concession. That's the concession. Uh, Really. All uh, right. Well, um, I hope you've been able to tolerate this match. Yeah. I mean, it, it it seems 
very boring, obviously, and it, it's so frustrating when you play against it. But but a lot of the time, this is kind of the choice you made in deck construction, because right. Tyrell, by not putting any resets into their deck, yeah. really kind of set themselves up to a point where they, they rush no so options. fast they, they take it down, yeah. or if they can't uh, claim the fast victory, then... They're, they're, they really have that. no options. So really, he put himself into a situation where... He has no options. No, the unstoppable no force was stopped <laughs> by yeah. the immovable object. Exactly, exactly. Okay, guys, um, um, I think that's pretty much it from the transmission uh, for from tonight. our end. Uh, um, I'll just look up the timing. So, uh, so we still have to do the draw for the winner of the token. So let right. us go to the screenshot. One second. We're going to grab some dice. Make a dice roll. So we have Johan as the winner. So the people who bet on Johan were Nerby fans, uh, Irish Mad Cat, Snowboard. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Any other Johans you can see? Um, a last second one there. Oh, and I'm a bunny sneaking in a Johan. So let's grab a D6 and make a roll. Yeah. So we have uh, plenty of dice since we're in a game store, obviously. Uh, so we make two rolls for this. So the rule number one for the ear tokens is going to be number four. Which one is that? So number four down the list is... Johan, Johan, Johan. Johan. Well, there's only four on Johan, is there? No. We Can you see a fifth one? Um, we have one, two, three. Four. Four. All right. So, so uh, I'm a bunny gets a, a set. I'm a bunny gets a set of ones? ear tokens, and, and then we have the betrayal tokens. Uh, so sorry, it's uh, one, of one of three. One of three. So that's uh, the poison piece. tokens. So the poison tokens goes to uh, number one. Number one. That's uh, Nerby Fangs. Nerby Fangs will be getting the uh, betrayal tokens. So for all our tokens and card winners in the chat. Uh, let yourself be known to us so that we can send you your uh, much uh, well-deserved loot. Um, and also, we will be back here tomorrow uh, streaming the top four and then the finals. Uh, and possibly, we might get into casting <laughs> some of our uh, Lord of Light tournament, right? Uh, possibly. Possibly, possibly. Uh, but that's it for us tonight. I uh, hope you get a nice evening or, uh, as it is here, a late night uh, of plenty of fun. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, guys.